What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. And before we head into Nakron, almost forgot uh, about a side quest that we could have done a while ago. We should breeze through this, given our level. Um, but right here, from the main academy gate, just head northeast along the bridge. There should be a summon sign here. Go on and do this. This is part of Hero's quest line. Uh, gets us his armor as well as a katana, so not needed for platinum, but worth doing. Uh, if he dies here, you can try again, so, you know, you'll be fine no matter what, but just run up and, and beat up this Bloodborne dude that he's fighting. That's why I love that move in PvP. That's the catch on it. Boom, boom, boom. drop your balls on the guy after you beat him. Okay, we get the Raptor of the Mists. Talk to him. Oh, that bloody finger was here's a token. Smithing stone. Fire. Dying to... Yes, she is the dead in spite. If she comes, there is no shit. Beyond the harp swing. Okay, and then we're gonna go to the round table. This was the five that I was talking about before the Radon fight that I couldn't remember. But given how they nerfed my boy, it's not like it matters. Radon, God, he got he got obliterated. That was so sad to see. Like, watch watch the Let's Play fight of Radon, and you'll be like, oh. Anyway, with that five though, we can get this up to fifteen, almost to sixteen. Might as well put a couple... Well, actually, the damage on you doesn't really matter. I guess, guess I could upgrade you. Eh, whatever. All right, so back on track, though. Uh, it's time to go into Nakron. The great thing about this is we're going to be getting access to a ton of smithing mats. Uh, just going through Nakron and some attached areas, we'll be able to naturally get ourselves up uh, to the level we want to be. I'm also real fast while we're here, I believe... I don't remember if we ever went back and talked to, to Kenneth. Let's go talk to him real fast. We just need to talk to him about finding a true heir. And since we already gave Nefeli the Stormhawk, I think that... I don't know what the exact trigger is to advance the quest, but we're just going to talk to him real fast. I must put a true... Okay, yeah, we did talk to you. Alright, we can leave. We don't need to fight all these things. As long as Nefeli has been given Stormhawk and he's looking for a true heir, we should be good, even though we killed, uh, Gestock. But anyway, so run towards these big old rocks. This is gonna get us down into Nakron. More than likely, I think we can get through both Nakron and maybe Night Sacred Dick Ground this episode as well. It depends on how fast we're moving. Nakron itself is pretty short. And then we'll probably have a separate episode for the Ancestral Woods. So go on over here and you can see some rocks that we can jump down on. It's funny, I remember back when I did the, the guide to get down here, like to do the Ronnie quest line. I was like, yeah, so if there'll be a big hole here, just go on into it. So many people were like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. There's, there's no way down there. I'm like, yeah, just, just, just go. Go into the hole. Follow it around. kind of already see where the drops are. Then drop here. They can drop here. And then over here. You can see that we can drop again. And now we are in Nakron. Do I have any regular bolts? I could use this crossbow a little bit. Um, we wanna, oh, I'm going too far. I wanna drop right here. Right, we're gonna pop our lanterns. This place is nice and dark, and there should be 
uh, a rune item, some grease we can pick up, and a mushroom up ahead. There's our rune item. Drop down to here. Drop again. Get the sleepy grease. Get the mushroom. Welcome to Nakron the Eternal City. Uh, so we need to get over to there. I would suggest jumping from up here. And we're going to use that sprint jump trick that I talked about earlier. So jump, hit circle, and hold it. And now run and jump to get across. Same thing here. And that will get us access to the ghost flame torch. Um, it's, I mean, you can attack with it the same way you can a normal torch. The biggest difference is this is like a cool lighting versus a warm lighting. So um, I think it makes it a little bit easier to see personally, but the uh, the beast torch is, is best. So uh, from here, drop bone down. And you can boot that thing. More bird bolts. Uh, for the most part, these things are pretty easy. They're gonna, a couple of them will like shoot lances at you, but you need to be like really just kind of chilling and not moving for them to get you. Uh, the rune arc, after that we can head on down. Cross. I mean, and even though I'm setting me, you can see they're not doing a lot of damage. That guy just gives you some heals, so you know, kill him, don't kill him, doesn't matter. Uh, let's see. Oh, I can go over here and grab this. It's just a consumable. There's a bunch of that stuff. Uh, room, drop down, rune six, butterfly. Continue along for finger remedy. Oh, butterfly. No, I didn't get the butterfly. Oh, no, that's if I had. Never mind. You're long for the finger remedy and a smithing five. There's the butterfly. Let's head this way and drop. Jump on one inside. Grab the finger remedy. And back here. We got the smithing stone five. And then we're going to drop. Now, these guys are deceptively threatening. Um, if you're not careful, they can very, very quickly overwhelm you. They also do a kind of, a kind of a scary amount of damage, to be honest. So right now we're just popping them to pull them. This one wants to use this thing. Okay, well, if we're going to do that, I'll just run up and boot you. Uh, their arrows will cause frostbite buildup, but, you know. Basically, you just don't want to get caught by them on the bridge. You get caught by them on the bridge, uh, they do, like, a multi-hit combo, and it can very easily catch you and, and get a gravity kill. And obviously, we are not, uh, you know, we're not at a grace just yet, so you would have to do that whole run back down here and the rooftop hop and all that shit again. Uh, also, down in this area is going to be a lot of ghost glove work. And it's not like regular pickups. It's like that. Like, uh, you know, crafting material pickups. So just keep your eyes out for it. I'm sure I might end up missing one, but they're all over the place. So get the grace. Let's go ahead and spend our souls. Oh, I never even talked about the stuff. Hang on. Hopping back to the, the main table. I completely, completely forgot to talk about Radon's stuff. Okay, uh, so Remembrance. We have the Star Scourge Greatsword. Pretty nice greatsword. The the unique skill, Starcaller Cry, it is super cool, but it tends to get interrupted a lot. The follow-up attack that does the majority of your damage. Uh, one thing that is unique about this is when you go to two-hand it, instead you have both swords. So you get dual-wield Colossal Swords for the weight of a single Colossal Sword, which is really nice. Um, definitely a fun weapon to play with. I think the Ruins Greatsword is a better strength weapon, but if you want to use this, it's not bad. It's definitely really fun. 
of Lion Great Bow. Unfortunately, this thing's not very good. The Radon's Rain is a far cry from the rain that he did on us, but if you're looking for a Great Bow and you want one that has a unique attack, it's a decent choice. As always, if you are not interested in either of those, you can just go ahead and gobble that thing on up. Where's it at? Where's it at? Gobble, 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 gobble. And you know, keep in mind, even if you change your mind and then you decide you want them down the line, we got those mausoleums. Uh, also, we now have equipment of champions. So, you got some stuff for Renala here. You can buy Radon stuff if you want his armor. Um, his armor is actually pretty good. Pick up his armor. I don't like his helmet usually, but I might switch that up my fashion. Let's see if this puts me into fat roll territory. Oh, heavy load. We can address that, though. What's I gonna do is, like, take off my crossbow. Yeah, there we go. Look at me. Complete Chad status. Might mix up my helmet, too. I don't need that endurance. Wolfman. Uh, Crimson Hood. This gives me a pinch of vigor. What else do I go for? What else do I go for? Um... Kind of looks good fashion wise. I mean, this is this is good, obviously, for the the two endurance it gives, but it's like I don't have to have that. I'll just keep it on. We'll wear it a little bit longer. Anyway, um, head back on down. Do, do, do. Knock around Eternal City. Now, of course, since we gobbled that up, let's go ahead and spend those runes. Um, I'm gonna keep putting points into strength, I guess. I don't know. This is I should get my decks. I need to get my decks up some. My strength is high enough, I think, for now. One thing you could do if you want to just end game quality is just keep focusing like strength for the moment, and then when you get later, respec. Uh, so kill this one right here, and then we're just gonna work our way around. We're gonna do a big old loop in this area. A lot of these great shield dudes. Okay, so I'm gonna grab that. That allows us to buy, I believe it's ghost one and twos. And there is a ton of Dukist Urba in this area, as well as melted mushrooms. So just loop around grabbing everything. I'm gonna be doing literally like like a loop, just keeping the left wall on our side. Just running around, killing and looting. Gonna tuck back into here. Guys remind me a lot of uh, the Fulgrim and Skyrim. You know how like they're they're blind from how long they've been down below. Same vibes. Uh, this is where we go to proceed, but don't do that just yet. There's a couple more little pieces of loot around here that we want to get. Grab this. Grab this. Head over to here for some more loots. Do, 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 do. The Great Shield Soldier Ashes. If you just want a tank, you're confident that you will deal all the damage and you just need something that's going to distract a boss for like a minute and a half, two minutes. Fantastic summon. It's just five of these guys with a Great Shield. <laughs> As you can imagine, they're good at blocking. I don't know. We'll see how I'm feeling about Bloodhound's Fangs. I really do like my Halberd. Uh, head on in here. This is Halberd would scale better. Um, I mean, it works fine with quality, but it also does really well as a strength weapon. And I could respect the decks on over, pick up a little bit more health. 
and do just fine with this. That's the thing is a lot of people, you know, they think like, oh, strength, you know, have to use a colossal weapon. And like, yeah, colossal weapons are good with strength, but that doesn't mean you have to. You could just do a, you know, a heavy halberd like this, and I could do a, you know, great shield halberd. And that would comfortably allow me to tackle pretty much all the content in the game without much issue. I'm not going to have the, the raw killing potential of a lot of other builds, but I mean, we're doing just fine. I think we're actually cruising along very comfortably. That. One more back here. Smoking stone. I think there's actually something around the corner as well. No, there's not. Okay. Alright. A uh, bunch of dudes meet. A uh, bunch of herb and mushrooms. Cyber 4 behind the building on the left. Larval tier. Loot, great shield ashes. Larval tiller in the final building. Then down. Okay. Now we're going to head for that gap. This, just run past it briefly. There's a bunch of guys that are going to ambush. Kill them, get the larval tier. So as you can see, now that we're getting like later in the game, we're just respec item, respec item, respec item. And a lot of it is down in this area. So, you know, if, if you were like waiting to respec because you thought they were limited, that is no longer the case. By the time you're done this area, you come away with, like, over 10. Uh, so, you know, more so than ever before, if you were debating on mixing things up, trying out a different weapon, trying out a different build, now is a fantastic time for that. Okay, and now for one of the coolest yet easiest boss fights in the entire game. This is the Mimic. Now, uh, if you want a genuine boss fight experience, just head on in. If you want to be cheesy, take off your weapon and your shield, open this and walk on in. So the Mimic is going to duplicate everything about you, which means it's going to have the Kukris I have, it's going to have the weapons I have, and, uh, you know, because of that, if I come in with no weapons, the Mimic doesn't have weapons. And now all it can do is punch me. I'm gonna get this parry sooner or later. Screw it. It's kind of messed up that we're able to even do this, but... The one thing that's interesting about this fight, if you have ever wanted to practice parrying, come in here with a weapon that you suck against parrying, like it's like great sword, or uh, you know, great sword or straight sword or dagger or whatever. Just have a level one version of it on your hand, spawn in so that he has that, and then you can just practice parrying the whole fight. So, you know, pretty cool in that regard. It's literally a uh, parry punching bag. But yeah, so we get a tier uh, arcane builds. You're going to love this. Look at this thing. Eight arcane out of that. Now, there is a minor, very minor attack power debuff, as you can see, 477 down to 461. Uh, but if you're playing arcane, this is absolutely a great, great piece of gear to have at this point. So hit that grace, and we're going to head on up. Uh, 
Uh, this shiny guy up ahead should be a sombering five. Yep, there we go. It's good to see not all of my notes have changed from the update. Uh, there should be a rune item up ahead, some arrows even farther down. Uh, and then we're going to grab the very first monolith and then go to the Ancestral Woods Grace and then Night Sacred Ground. Tell us to go back. Okay, study hall part two after this area. Uh, so yeah, right here. Just dip on down. Uh, we're just going to ignore these dudes for now. But we will grab this very first one just because it's like right here in front of us. You really want to die that bad, dude? It's going to give you the benefit of the doubt, but... So just run, keep her on your right hand side, and if you run right up here, you will find the grace that you need to access Night Sacred Ground. This is another super secret path. I know I just sound like I'm ranting, but it goes back to the original guide of going through the Ronnie quest line. People are like, I don't know how to get to Night Sacred Ground, and I'm like, you just go, it's right there, and they're like, how? This is how. Ta-da! You're in Night Sacred Ground. It was that easy. So anyway, once you're in... Let's keep going along, going along these rooftops. And we're going to jump on down. Grab that. Those are good to prevent death. Grab that. Jump up here. Grab the rune arc. Jump across. Go around the back of this for another celestial do, just in case you booped any other NPCs in the future. I know there's some more of these uh, silver tier things. You don't really, you don't need them, but I'm just gonna grab it because it's right here. It's not exactly a uh, an out of the way thing. Okay, let's see. Boluses jump down. Rune arc jump again for do crafting things across the route for the mimic tiers. All right. Now there should be two mimic tiers. That one right there, and then another one. If you give this one just a second, it should just walk off and kill itself. Let's see. If it doesn't, we'll just go down and beat it up, but it may have already died. Yep, there's the souls. Um, and you don't have to do that, but that one is an archer, and that's why you see all of these bloodstains here. Our people get shot by it, so just scooting back, it just walks off the cliff. Now, these things, they don't seem like, you know, you look at it at first, and you're like, oh, naked NPC, yeah, okay. You're ready to get smashed. These things are actually pretty dangerous. Like, if you... If you give them a chance, they will beat you into ground meat. So, don't discount it just because it's a naked silver lady. They will do some serious damage. So, grab that stuff, though. We're going to continue along this path. Let me scroll my notes a little bit here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Across the side, a new building. Okay. Uh, there's butterflies behind this corner. And we're going to run along this. Coming up on a very awesome yet controversial summon in just a little bit here. Grab the Black Wet Blade. That's super important. Uh, the Black Wet Blade is going to allow you to make your weapons uh, occult, blood, and I believe poison as well. Uh, but so what's really nice about that is just how this is Cold Knight Rider Glaive and it has Sword Dance, I could make a Bleed Knight Rider Glaive that still has Sword Dance. So instead of having to use, you know, Bloody Slash or uh, Sampuku or anything like that, I could just put, put Passive Effect of Bleed on here and still keep a different weapon art. So super, super useful. Uh, and besides that, we're missing one last Wet Blade, but that comes a good bit later. So pop a Stonework Key. Gotta be creepy. And then 
opening this chest gets you access to the legendary Ashen Summon, the Mimic tier. Now on top of needing this for your Platinum, it's arguably the best summon in the game, even after the nerf. So this thing was nerfed pretty significantly, um, but what this does, it costs health to use instead of FP, so anybody can use it, which is great. And it's like that boss we just fought, so it's going to take on the form of you. Now, pre-patch, this thing was insane. It would use your flasks to heal. It would use all of your buffs. The AI in particular of it was just just absurd. But yeah, hop through that window just to get back on track with the notes. Um, it's been dumbed down a little bit, so it's not going to carry you through the game. But with the right weapon and the right weapon art, it's still the best summon of the game, by far. Uh, it's just capable of doing crazy amounts of damage. And... That should not be discounted. Now, keep in mind, it's a Mimic. So because of that, if your build is crap, the Mimic will be crap. You know, it's not it's not going to carry you through the game unless you, like, kind of already have a decent build put together. But especially if you're using... Oh, yeah, Nox Flowing Hammer. I forgot about this. I said earlier we couldn't get this. Yes, we can, actually. Uh, I didn't know this was here initially, but... Woo! I mean, kind of a goofy weapon, but, you know, it's, it's definitely cool. Let me take that off. Um, so yeah, well, I'll, I'll probably be using Mimic on this playthrough myself, um, but there are lots and lots and lots of summons to choose from. So for this part, this ball is going to come after you. What I'd suggest doing, where is she at? Where is she at? One, oh, she's coming up after me? What are you, where are you going, lady? Oh, it's because I was slamming the spear. That's funny. There should be two of them. Well, since the lady's left, we'll just kill the ball. Ah, there's the other lady. All right, this is what I was looking for. So, usually there's two down here. And what I like doing is coming over here to fight. And what's great is over here, you're going to be safe from the ball. So you can safely fight these things without worrying about the ball crushing you. Additionally, while the ball is stuck, you can just bully it like this. Yeah, so just stay inside of these areas and you'll do just fine. Get another larval tier. Are you doing some mist? That's not going to work here. So she's down. We'll grab this and this. I believe that's it. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Sorry, so we got the grace to the left. Um, we're going to show you all the mimic. It's unupgraded, of course. So don't expect anything too crazy out of it. But it's fine. It's fun. And the thing is, with, with the right weapon, if you're using something like Blasphemous Blade or Rivers of Blood or Sacred Relic Sword, something where your Mimic has access to a very strong weapon art, your Mimic is going to do a lot of damage. And obviously the benefit of it costing health means, you know, even strength builds or builds like mine, which have very limited FP, can use it. And plus, what's better than having a copy of yourself? Double Halberd Gang! Um, also, fun fact with the Mimic... The Mimic's damage potential is also tied directly to how strong your weapon is. And what I mean by this is if you have a max tier weapon, your Mimic is going to absolutely decimate targets. They're also really, really good if you're using a bleed weapon because you're effectively doubling the amount of bleed that you're going to do. So I know a lot of people are upset with the Mimic nerf, and it's definitely not as good as it used to be. But even then, it's, it's still really good. It's still a really good summon. You know, we got double sword dances going on right now. Double the frostbite buildup. And you can even, like, you can abuse this to a certain extent. What I mean by that is, like, if I have a good example of this, so I have frostbite on this halberd right now. And then on the, uh, on Bloodhound's Fang, we have bleed. Oh, he disappeared. So what I could do is I could put on Bloodhound's Fang, spawn the mimic, switch back to my halberd, and then all of a sudden, I have an NPC that is doing bleed, and I have an NPC, or I'm going to be doing frost, and my mimic is going to be doing bleed. And that's really cool, because there's not a lot of things that will allow you to do that. Actually, I think I like Giant Hunt more, but I'll tell you what, this thing is fantastic at getting status procs. We don't need to 
to kill that guy. I'm just, you know, might as well. He's right there. Uh, but so after you take him out, head on up here. That teleporter is going to take us back. Ignore it for now. Instead, head on over here. And this is what Ronnie sent us down here to get. The Finger Slayer Blade. And a Great Ghost Club work. Uh, so from here, go on and hit this teleporter. This will take us right back to that initial grace. And up next, we have the Ancestral Woods. And then after that, we have a return to the study hall. Um, so you could go turn this into Ronnie right now. I'm just going to knock out this area first, just because I, I think that makes more sense. Um, but yeah, so we're going to rest here from Ancestral Woods. Next episode, we're going to be focusing on running through and doing all the stuff here. And in fact, in the next couple of episodes, our goal is going to be to completely knock out all of the underground regions. Um, so some of the content might get a little hard. There's a couple bosses we're going to fight that are definitely up there, but I think y'all can do it. And if you can't, keep in mind, um, you know, to be honest, at this point in the walkthrough, uh, we, you're, you're pretty good to kind of go off on your own. I mean, going into the capital is going to trigger like one NPC to move locations. Uh, and he is involved in a non-trophy secret ending. But the, the only real trigger that y'all need to look out for as you continue is very, very late in the game. After we get to uh, Feru Missoula, that area that we took a Belfry Tower to. Um, wait, did I do that? Was that in a previous? That might have been in the episode that I, I redid. I'll have, to, I'll have to take a look. I think, I don't know if we redid the Belfry Towers yet. We'll take a look real fast. Um, but yeah, after beating the boss in Feru Missoula, that is the... The only main trigger that can lock you out a bunch of content because that's gonna uh it's gonna remove the capital so this is why i don't like redoing walkthrough episodes because now i'm like wait a minute did we are the belfries done still that one's inactive that one's active okay so we didn't do the belfries so we'll we'll get back to the belfries they they might actually be in the next episode because we'll probably have some time but we're gonna wrap up here ancestral woods is up next after that um probably doing the study hall part two and then also belfry towers the belfry towers will get added on when we get a second they're not like super incredibly important for the time being but stay tuned and i'll catch y'all soon with some more